Kevin, thank you so much for coming to Startup World Cup. Uh, well, everybody here, I think, well, most people have seen you on Shark Tank, and they know you're uh, into investments. But I want to start with, how did you become an investor? What got you into the investment space? You know, what, what happens, I think, in your transition from being an operator uh, to an investor is you go through the experience of trying to determine do you have the executional skills to operate a business. And then if, if you're successful, you take that knowledge, more importantly, what the mistakes you made, and try and help others that you invest in avoid those mistakes. That makes you a more uh, successful investor. So that transition occurred after you know, a few liquidity events. And then, like everybody else, I retired for a year and I got bored out of my mind. I've seen every beach in the world. And it's yeah. boring. And I wanted to get back in the game. And uh, I came back. Um, in private equity and venture, and I've worked for some of the larger firms for a while, and then I said, I can do this myself, and I founded my own firm. That's generally the transitional path. And uh, Shark Tank came along, which, believe me, nobody thought this would happen. Um, and and, the, and we're, we're gonna learn a little bit about Shark Tank today because the secret sauce of Shark Tank is customer acquisition. Uh, you'll see uh, on tonight's show a product uh, that's gonna air We'll sell two or three million dollars worth of it in one hour. Wow. We'll not pay anything for customer acquisition. Um, and my job as the investor is to take advantage of this massive social media platform. And, and when, I in, when I invest in companies, and I don't want this to come off as arrogant, but it's a fact, I'm not like another investor. Most investors come from you know, private equity or venture firms. They're great people. They have zero ability to acquire customers. All they can do is pay for them. My strategy is how can I tell your company's story and help you acquire customers at a significantly lower cost? That's the model of what I do. Great. Well, as you mentioned, you are different from a lot of investors uh, out here. And we do have a lot of entrepreneurs here as well. So I want to focus a little bit on the entrepreneur side. Yeah. You've heard thousands and thousands of pitches by now. What makes a winning pitch, in your opinion? How is that different from other pitches that don't get the funding? Yeah, there's three attributes. Um, and and the, the reason I have this data is the show Shark Tank is on in 42 countries. Some it's the generic American tape with you know, voiceover to the language of that geography, and others is new productions like Canada and England and Australia and New Zealand, Brazil and Mexico where it's called Lion's Den in Germany and Dragon's Den in Australia, whatever. It's the same idea. And it doesn't matter what geography, what language, the entrepreneurial adventure is the same. So there was a little research done about four years ago that took the unedited tape from all the pitches that actually got funded, did not determine the outcome of the business. They weren't looking for that. They were trying to figure out, in the period that you were engaging with the investor, what were common attributes that achieved success? So it turns out, not in just some of the cases, 100% of the cases, three attributes existed. Here they are. If it's the only thing you guys remember from this, this is it. So you should write these down. They'll, they'll serve you well uh, in the future. And, and, and I actually, I consider these attributes the definition of leadership in any sector because I don't care if you're a preacher, a politician, an entrepreneur, a mother, a father. No one follows you if you don't know where you're going. So here are the three issues. Number one, can you articulate the opportunity in 90 seconds or less? The whole idea of presenting an opportunity is to define it very quickly. What is it that you have that could be such a great opportunity? Like what, what idea is it? But if you can't explain it, and most, most of the great pitches you can explain in 30 seconds. Here's what I do. This is why you, I'm here. This is my product, this is my service. So you only get 90 seconds for that. Now this is very important. Great ideas, and this is number two. Great ideas are a dime a dozen. What's really rare are executional skills. So now you have the ear of the investor. You could be in a VC pitch, you could be in an elevator, you could be on Shark Tank carpet, whatever. Okay, I like the idea. Why can you make it happen? What is it about you and your team that can execute on this? 
Do you know the sector? Have you done this before? Have you worked for a competitor? Have you failed three times and figured out the mistakes you made? I personally would rather invest in, a, in an entrepreneur that's failed and felt the sting of failure and is highly motivated to get out there and fix what they did wrong because they've learned from it. But that doesn't matter. What matters is to tie your executional skills to the idea so that all of a sudden you're mitigating risk for the investor. Great idea, great team, and I can feel the change in a room in the context of Shark Tank. You can start to see all these sharks starting to say, hey, what do we got here? Yeah. And, and because you, you have to have executional skills. But there's one more, and this one's the killer. <laughs> I've seen this happen so many times. So let's put it back in the context of Shark Tank. You've beat out 100,000 applications to be one of the 240 companies that tapes. And you're there, you're, you have your moment, you got the first one right, everybody loves your idea. You got the second one right, you've convinced, convinced everybody that you're the right person to execute. And then this happens. You have to know your numbers. How big is the market? How fast is it growing? What's the gross margins? What's the break even analysis? How many competitors do you have? You have to have those right on the tip of your tongue because that is the glue that binds. If you get onto Shark Tank carpet and you've got everybody else in your deal and you don't know your numbers, you deserve to burn in hell in perpetuity and I will personally put you there. And I've done it many times. You have to know your numbers. It's the language of business. You get those three right, the probability of a deal goes up geometrically higher. And it's in every single successful pitch. You can go back in time, go and look at Shark Tank episodes, you will see all three of those attributes every time someone gets funded. If you like that video, wait till you see my next one. Don't forget to click right over here and subscribe.